Hello everyone and welcome back to Wolfler Programming. Today we're going to be talking about a new Linux device that I'm really excited about and that is, yes you guessed it, the Steam Deck. A couple of weeks ago I got an email that said your 512 gigabyte Steam Deck is ready. I completely forgot that I had pre-ordered this thing way back when. But it's finally here and I want to talk about some of my thoughts on it. There's a couple things that you might want for the Steam Deck and I've had those laid out here. One, you might want a little stand right here to keep, uh, to keep it standing up. You might want a keyboard and mouse, and here I've got the Raspberry Pi keyboard and mouse. Those are really cheap. I also found that the Pine Phone's dock, this is the dock for the original Pine Phone, actually works perfectly. So you can, it's got one USB-C port, and you can hook up the Pine Phone dock and get video and USB out. Also, for controllers and for video games, I use the new Xbox controller. Okay, so let's see it in action. All right, here we've got the Xbox remote connected to the Steam Deck. And I've also got the Raspberry Pi dock connected to the USB-C port. Not the Raspberry Pi dock, sorry, the Pine Phone dock and the Raspberry Pi keyboard and mouse hooked up. And so this is the um, Steam Deck menu. Uh, and you see here, I've used something called EmuDeck to automatically install a lot of emulators, and then I put some ROMs in here. And to prevent a copyright strike, I'm not going to launch any of these ROMs, because I think they're all Nintendo, and they're all for my son. But there is one game <laughs> that I really want to show, and that is the decompiled version of Ocarina of Time. It's called Ship of Something, and it's in a flat pack. And the Steam Deck is actually running an immutable file system that runs everything through flat packs. And if you don't know what flat pack is, it's sort of like a Docker container. Basically, it kind of automates some of, some of the dependencies. They, it takes a little more space than a traditional Linux package, but um, they're sandboxed and you can, uh, for the Steam Deck, where they don't want you to mess with the file system, it works pretty good. So this is called Ship of, I forget. They just use kind of a code word so that it's not like copyrighted. But this is actually Ocarina of Time. It has been decompiled. I don't know if you've heard of the Ocarina of Time de decompilation project, but it's decompiled and um, they recompile it natively. So this is actually the game running native code. This is not emulation and uh, it doesn't run perfect. Yeah, I still haven't configured the controller. Um, but running mobile here, you can see here, I can grab the Steam Deck and I can navigate through the game. <laughs> Look at that. It looks absolutely amazing on the Steam Deck and this is running natively in a flat pack. Because this is just an x86 PC. Of course you could emulate this on the, uh, you know, the Nintendo 3DS version or the Nintendo 64 version or even the GameCube version because all those would run fine on here. But Having it run natively, you get the full resolution, taking up the whole display, and it looks and feels beautiful. You can use any kind of controller you want. So to get out of games, um, you can hit the Steam menu, and you can just hit Exit Game. And this works for non-Steam apps as well. So some apps I've hooked up to the Steam menu, and they work. Like Firefox works okay, um, but other browsers don't. It does have Angelfish, which I thought was interesting. That's the mobile browser that's on the Pine Phone. I don't know if that runs very well. It runs okay. So we do have Google and we can look up Pine Phone <laughs> and we can see stuff. We can browse the web there. So you see some things are kind of missing. In the gaming mode, um, I think things are running in Wayland, but on the desktop mode, things are running in uh, the traditional um, X Compositor, whatever they call it. Yeah, you can close out the web browser just like you can any other app. So because this is a full-blown com computer, you can hook it up to an external display. You can use it as a regular com regular computer. Just with an immutable file system, everything is done in a flat pack. So like I installed Emacs because I wanted to use Emacs in the emulator. That's my text emulator. That's my text editor of choice for, emu for uh, terminal emulation. But it didn't show up in the terminal because it's installed um, in a flat pack and it's an immutable file system. So. 
it doesn't work here, but you see I can launch it from the menu uh, just fine. I haven't installed VS Code yet, but um, some, some network connectivity doesn't work too great. It seems like the Wi-Fi antennas are not that great, so I need to be pretty close to my router. When I'm upstairs near my desktop, I just share my desktop's internet connection and it works pretty well. I can connect to my Windows shares, my NFS box right here, and I can transfer files. It's got VLC media, media player, and it will play any kind of movie you want. So if you're driving in the car and you want a open source friendly device, uh, tablet-like, I think there's nothing better than this. The speakers sound amazing, the screen. Um, while some people complain it's not an OLED screen, I think it looks great and they can, they can play files over the network. Some people complain that they're on an airplane uh, because Steam is kind of like, it does. It, you need to switch it to offline mode before you get on an airplane. They might not have access to their games, things might not work, but that doesn't affect emulators, right? So if you've got a bunch of emulators on here with a bunch of ROMs, you can play those on the airplane whenever you want. And I will tell you that the emulators run absolutely amazing on this thing. It emulates pretty much anything. It runs the uh, Wii U really good. I was surprised how far CMU has come, has come lately. On And on the Steam Deck, it runs perfectly. In fact, um, I, I, it runs better than, than what I could have expected. So, And I thought that's kind of like PS3 era. I haven't tried any PS3 games, but basically this thing can emulate most things great. Um, one of the problems I had is that when I hooked it up to my 4K TV, it wanted to output 4K 30 hertz. That's the most that the PinePhone dock can output. It can't do 60 hertz. So if you wanted to use this as a media playback machine, you'd probably want to buy a more expensive dock um, to play Kodi, because I like to have my movies um, play through the movie player 4K at 60 frames per second, so that if you have an odd frame, or frame rate like 24 hertz or whatever, um, the, the faster frame rate will make it look a little bit better. You won't see that little skipping. Um, yeah, Cody does run pretty good. Cody does freeze for me every now and then, and I think that's because it's connected to my local network. So if you wanna, if you want the whole media player, you can use this. I think um, because it's a it's a portable machine, I would be more interested in using just a VLC player and scrolling through my shares, you know, manually, than actually using um, using Cody. But you see, it's pretty buggy. It looks like Cody is actually freezing for me. And I think that's because uh, something because it's in a flat pack. Things some some of my applications have a hard time connecting to the internet. Like um, every now and then, I'll have three different web, web browsers open. And for example, Angelfish has better luck connecting to the internet than like Firefox, which might just hang going to Amazon.com or something like that. And when you're on the desktop mode and Cody freezes, it really freezes, and you have to hard set. And you see. Um, we have a we have a frozen desktop. It's Linux, right? It's just straight Linux. Bugs and all. I think it's great. I think this is the most consumer friendly device I've seen in years. I think everyone should support uh, should support Valve and, and get it if you can afford it. The 400 model. If you're gonna play games, you really need to get a big SD card because Steam games are huge. Um, I think what it comes with like 32 gigabytes. The the lower end model. Um, I did put a 400 gigabyte SD card I got at Costco for like 40 bucks. That was one on sale. And I've been installing my games to that. And for games, the SD card is fine. So if you want to install those big 80 gigabyte games, it's good to just get a couple SD cards, at least 100 gigabytes for some of those larger games. You can actually swap the SD cards out. You can put Windows on here. I haven't tried it. Um, but yeah, I think this is a great, really great device. I'd love to see more um, mobile features, more PinePhone like UIs running on this thing, like Fosh or KDE Plasma Mobile. And um, yeah, what do you guys think? Are you guys excited about the Steam Deck and where Linux devices are coming in the future? Let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This has been Wolfer, Wolfer Programming showing off the Steam Deck. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day.